Right now we have a trap sitting out that's locked open with a bunch of bread and animal fat in it. And what we're doing is we are trying to get the birds used to the trap itself because um, we want the birds to willingly go in. That way we can catch them and analyze them. Algonquin we monitor the gray jay population so each year we conduct a fall population census where we try and just record all the individuals in the area and that's what we're doing right now. The gray jay is a pretty remarkable bird um, so one it's found in every province and territory in Canada and gray jays are pretty remarkable because they cache food in the fall so they'll store individual food items all throughout their territory and then they'll slowly retrieve those caches throughout the winter and that's what they use to survive the harsh winters of Algonquin. Mm -hmm. So typically in the summer you won't actually see them. So most people who come to Algonquin in the summer don't see gray jays at all. Um, they will actively seek out humans primarily in the fall and the winter because they do know they're a food source. But in the summer when other stuff is better than humans then they won't come and find you. Uh, something that I'm not really studying but I am interested in is their personalities. So the Jays have a huge spectrum of personalities. You'll have a super shy, timid Jay who will just stay at the top of trees and make little noises at you, sometimes make alarm calls at you. Whereas you'll have another Jay that will land on your head, land on your hand, start opening your backpack. like start stealing food that you're trying to eat. There are kind of these anecdotal reports um, throughout like logging times and things like that of Grey Jays coming to uh, logging camps and actually stealing food and stuff like that. Grey Jays have many names so um, they're commonly called Whiskey Jacks, Canada Jays, Grey Jays but then they also have the name Camp Robber so you have to kind of assume that it's innate at that point if they have that name. Feeling hopeful about this one? Hopefully. Never know exactly what happens, but it should be pretty good, hopefully. <laughs> So what I do to take a blood sample is I just sweep aside its feathers to expose the brachial vein.
So his color combination is cool closer. Pink over orange on the left, white over silver on the right. What we're gonna do first is I'm gonna collect the stick with a bunch of saliva that's in his mouth. And what we're doing is just figuring out uh, what the microbiome, so what sort of bacteria and other things live in their mouth. Um, it'll be in, it, in its saliva, so we'll just pick all that saliva up with this Q-tip. We'll use another one as well. I'm gonna get as much as possible just to try and increase the likelihood that we'll catch all of the little microbes and stuff that live in there. So we do that because they coat their uh, saliva, their food. their food with saliva. So we want to see whether or not it has antimicrobial properties or if it has certain bacteria or something in it that helps protect and preserve their food. He's big, 50, 155, 156, 15.5, 37.4, 115.2. So now that we're done processing him, we just give him a tiny piece of bread if he wants to take it and he's good to go.